Yo, yo, everybody. Vladimir was traveling the lands of Britannia until something shocking occurred. Yes, look at the influence here. Cannot ignore this nonsense. Britannians decided they wished to make peace with the Northern Empire. It was horrific. And they did manage to make peace. Vladimir used all of his influence to say no. And Kaladog himself was also saying no. It was a 50-50. And at 50-50, Kaladog said, Okay, let's make peace. After we had only lost land. And we were just winning. Winning and winning. There was no losing. Vladimir was winning with everyone else. So Vladimir did the only thing that he knew that made sense. He went to an enemy village immediately and raided it and caused another war. That's why this influence is down in the shit. And that is why now this massive battle can occur where Vladimir can show his countrymen that they should follow his lead and his sensibilities. And peace right now is just not an option. And so the battle begins. Right next to the bloody enemies. What is this? Dear God, that is a lot of archers on cavalry coming over there. Looks like we've got to bring out the weaponry. Oh, there. Some of them are running away from Vladimir. That shows that the enemy have intelligence yet. Silly people. And the enemies were relocating. Vladimir was not quite sure what to make of this. But he did not believe it was the most intelligent of choices. They were running right into their deaths and having a strange formation that would not allow them to defend themselves. There was not much thought to be had on this situation. Vladimir would strike hard and true, enter the melee fray and crush the enemy. They would feel the wrath of all the Batanian peasants. And forward, crushing the skulls of the Imperials with big swords and big power. Big power being a primary key wording here. Chop, chompity chop. Many men were in this battle. Many would fall. It was utter chaos. Men coming up from behind them. Truly, it was a mess. So many men chasing Vladimir, understanding that he was a true threat, but... Little did they know, they had no chance of defeating this deadly adversary. This Britannian Lord! Husband of the Princess. Killer of hundreds and hundreds of men. Bloodthirsty, demonic battle man. It seemed he was alone in the fray. That would not stop him from continuing. Clearly the enemies were paying no heed to his monstrous battle presence. No stupid horseman would stop him from killing them all. One thing to note, see it seems that 1.80 does bloody nothing for knockdowns and stuns. And shit, it's still just as annoying as it always bloody was. I look forward to a mod that fiddles with those numbers. So just fucking remove it, man. God damn. Indeed, Vladimir would very much appreciate being able to bloody move. The Batanians had the upper hand. Perhaps the Imperials retreating constantly was not in their favor. Perhaps they did not have all the cavalry they used to. It did not matter. Whatever the case, indeed, the Tanians should have never decided to shoot peace and pay money for such when they had the upper hand. Caladoc had played right into the Batanian. 
played right into the Imperials' hands by by just giving up on the war. They had done the thing that didn't need to be done. It was ridiculous. And now Vladimir could show him real power of Britannia. They were winners. And so the dastardly Empire men were defeated. And it seems that evil companions cannot actually be imprisoned. How unfortunate. But with that army defeated, finally perhaps Kalador could understand just how superior they were. Vladimir did not intend to allow the Empire to recuperate. Oh no. He intended to go on the offensive. Whilst Uthlame Castle had too many defenders at the moment, there were ways to get the influence back that he had lost. Get the influence back that he needed to really turn up the heat. Vladimir was slowly travelling through Imperial lands, finding many and many enemies. Yet... As a true forest dweller, he could outrun them all. And when he saw one lord hesitate to fight him when he had been isolated, he decided it was time to say hello. A lord called Arkor, an older man who did not want to fight for glory. What did he want to fight for? Vladimir did not know. But he did not have the balls to fight Vladimir, mano in mano. And so Vladimir knew this was a man that needed to be brought to heel. Violently. And there was no expecting this man to even remotely Forward, attempt an offensive. Move. Something that Vladimir would be more than happy to do. The enemy's horse archers were indeed contemplating going on the offensive, but it seemed they had a change of heart. Vladimir was not going to have any of it. These men would be a part of the battle, whether they wanted to or not. Indeed, Vladimir was powerful enough to block attacks last second from horsemen. What a true beast. He would do what he could to defend his archers at first. He had a very large line of infantry that were dealing with the other cavalry that would then need to regroup as some of them wished to rush forward like little monkeys. A charge is a combined effort. Okay, yes. They still are not playing nicely at all. Could you perhaps charge properly this time? No, no, they could not. And so Vladimir would take it into his own hands. To charge with his men. The archers surely could take care of the cavalry. Whilst the infantry would do what the infantry is supposed to. Protect the other infantry and the archers themselves. Now, is this worth charging with? Forward! Probably not. Telling them to go forward was probably the move for now. And then perhaps charge. charge. Very well. They finally understood, except for these two men here that nearly went away. But it is what it is. Sometimes soldiers are just as stupid as fat nobles. Human nature. Bloody men, you. Some men just need it to be told properly, firmly what to do. And some need to be cut down. Chopped into little bits. Plenty of those around. Apparently, the archers thought they could escape Vladimir by going a bit further back. They were wrong. They were not safe. They were in fact dead. Now Arkor was in prison and Vladimir's influence was growing. But he needed more men now as that battle had been dastardly. He would need to quickly retreat before aiding in more battles. Because he needed to be at his strongest to help the headless Batanian dogs, which were the other lords. The lords and ladies of Batania wished to take Othalame Castle, and Vladimir wished to be a part of this effort. Yet he was also worried that an army was merely waiting by 
right beyond the forest line. Not engaging them. No, even with quite a few extra men. And then it became clear. Another army was coming. Vladimir knew that the Batanian nobles had no intention of managing to flee to fight another day. It was not even fleeing, really. It was a calculated redistribution of efforts. But no, they did not decide to do that. So Vladimir decided that he did not wish to lose the lives of all his men for their stupidity. Now he could go close to Epicrotea to see what was up, or he could go find this new army created by a lord or lady. And why did the game? I clicked over there. The armies of the Imperials were not faltering. Despite how many they were destroying, it was atrocious. Vladimir needed a lord leader of men to do a good job. He needed it for his influence himself was low. It was soon to go back into the positives, but not soon enough. He had joined the army and it seemed he was one of them in there with the most men about. He thought they were going to go defend a different castle being sieged down, but no. Bethag was also hungry for Othalame Castle to rejoin Britannia. An understandable sentiment, but hopefully she would not make the same mistake. It seemed they would not be doomed to fail where the others had, for they would strike at the castle when they got the chance, not allowing the armies of the Imperials to get close enough and get well rested and fed, no. They would strike a siege at night. The flames would lead the way and the black boar was ready to strike fair into the hearts of his foes. Fear, death, and death by arrows, and then later blades. The Ballistae needed to be dealt with, however, as they were being very deadly. Luckily, Vladimir's aim was impeccable. It also seemed that the men were not trying to get onto the Valistay again. An odd thing to see, really. Usually they were very happy to continuously hop on those things, but not this time. A strange choice. Perhaps it was too dark to climb the stairs. Who knew, but they were on the wall still. So quite bizarre. Unless the man had gone back up. So more had to be killed. Not that they wouldn't all be killed anyway. He was even trying to shoot the cover. The cheeky monkey, that was certainly not allowed. Vladimir did not appreciate such actions of clear misfortune for his people. The enemies were to be dealt with properly and finally. The metal should pierce their skin and it should be deadly. Ballista men had to go. They were not allowed to fire on his clansmen. And then the front door broke and it was time to rush out. Rush out and crush the line that was blocking the entrance. They thought they could stand in the way, but they could not. No, Britannia's finest cast through terrible lines of defense. These men, no skill, no morale, no ability. No, the ability only to die is what they had. They had to fall, they had to be taken down. Those filthy bastards. The Imperials would be no match for an intelligent Betania. An intelligent Betania, though, had the big, bad muscles and might of the Black Boar among them. The words Betania listen to the Black Boar more. They should. They should. It was a victory for the siege, and the people remained in the castle for now. 
which made much sense as the two armies of the Imperials were still around, still about, trying to do their best. And then Aesis appeared. Oh, uh, Ill-advised strike. And then it happened. Vlandia decided to join in on the war. Now that was not good. Vladimir had some renown, but not too much. And then it came. Should they make peace? It was split. No, this was Sir uh, Uthalem Castle's ownership. Peace, yes. Everybody said yes. We are not going to use any influence. We abstain and peace has been granted us with the Northern Empire. This time, Vladimir can accept it. They got Remtor Castle back, Uthalem Castle back. They even got Mashadan Castle. That was the end of a war that he could agree with. Now it was just Vlandia. And whilst Vlandia did have the superior strength, they did not have the Black Boar on their side. Vladimir had regained some of his strength, and he had gained some influence. But Vlandia's offensive had only begun, and all oh, they intended to keep going. But Vladimir, he thought, perhaps some of these lesser lords around and about were vulnerable and willing to fight. Oh yes, they thought to team up on Vladimir as he chased him down. And was this another one of Vladimir's failures? Or would it be a great victory? Time would tell, but the enemies would need to come up to them. Vladimir had no intention of letting the enemy get a free pass. The enemy lines closed in. Shields were raised, and Vladimir's archers had begun to shoot. The cavalry needed to go in. It was time. And the enemy's lines were long. Lot of crossbowmen. Oh dear, they were not in fact infantry at all. It was all crossbowmen. And that meant they needed to charge right the hell now. They needed to get in there before their men were pelted. These horsemen were blocking the way, giving their crossbowmen more time. That was not good. They needed to strike hard and fast. Vladimir could not see anyone doing it, so he would do it himself! Cutting down on these crossbowmen needed to happen now. They could not be allowed to escape. They had to be dealt with, so they would no longer be a threat. And then the horsemen came in again. Another charge. Could they not get these men off their damn horses? Strike hard and fast! It was not looking good. If his men could just hold out long enough for Vladimir himself to slaughter them all. It seemed unlikely. It was looking grim. But Vladimir was a beast of a man. He held out great hope. He would ensure that his rangers would not be defeated by these crossbowmen. No, he would not allow it. He would succeed. These horsemen had nothing on Vladimir! Neither did these crossbowmen. They would all fall before the might of the Black Boar! Stupid horsemen. Or, or they would, if the stupid stuns didn't exist. No! There was no amount of game changes in this game that would allow you to ignore knockbacks! 1.8.0 uh, does add some nice additions, but it doesn't do the one thing that it should fucking do properly. Allow you to not be stand-locked by shit. Now that would be magnificent. But oh no. Of course not. And so Vladimir was defeated. After painful days of being dragged about as a prisoner, Vladimir found a chance and escaped from his captors. Except everybody was standing around, waiting. As if the entire world stood still as Vladimir was a prisoner. He would attempt to flee to Aradwir's army and prayed that they had the strength that he did not. It looked highly unlikely. Once again, 
in prison. And once again, the entire army was just following him. Perhaps escape was not a good move. Perhaps remaining here was the smartest move. These men had lost their minds. They would wait to the ends of the earth to see Vladimir escape. Perhaps they would starve to death as well, but no, alas, Vladimir was forced to flee. How cumbersome, how bothersome. There was nothing much Vladimir could do but to be caught again and surrender. Perhaps this was the way to defeat the enemy. Merely bait everyone around after him for no discernible reason. The world had gone absolutely mad. Vladimir had been imprisoned for God knows how long. No one in Britannia was doing anything about it. And when he finally managed to escape, he ran to Dramel Castle. But Dramel Castle didn't have very many defenders. And all of those Vlandian lords that were hovering over him for some reason, who knows what was going on, but they would not let him escape. He went into Dramel Castle and they sieged it down just for him. Nobody was going to help. This was going to feed on Etia to defend. This army was going to Viron Castle to besiege. Other castles were being attacked. And in fact, the Azerite had gone, declared war on them. And so the Western Empire, Vladimir, did not look good. He had no food, no morale. Likely he had no items in his inventory anymore. He was broke, but he was not going to lay down. Even if there was nothing the militia of Dremor Castle could do. He would kill as many fucking Vlandians as he could. He would not get captured again. Not without killing hundreds of Vlandians first. Thankfully, they had catapults. And it seemed the Vlandians did not. This was not the spot to be at. They were striking way too truly at him. Vladimir had no intention of being struck truly by these bastards. Oh no, he was going to strike true on them. They were going to feel his wrath. His wrath. His revenge. For months of imprisonment. Torture. Degradation. He was not even given a warrior's death. Vlandia had made a poor choice to fuck with him. They were already on the walls. Impossible. That was way too soon. Where was their defense? This was not allowed. Men, Vlandians, kill them. They are evil incarnate and must be murdered. They could not defend themselves. It was a tragedy. The Britannians were being overrun. Vladimir could not allow himself to be caught off guard. But these shields were large. How is he going to break through single-handedly? Even traitors were among their ranks. It was a disaster. What could he do? There was too many shields, too many everything. Too many heavy armor. God, they had all fallen so quickly, so easily. The Britannians were weak little bastards. Bloody Britannian scum, bloody Vlandian scum. They were all scum. The Black Boar needed victory. Blood, death, destruction, but not of his people. What were the Britannians doing leaving him alone against all of these men? What was even going on? It made no sense. These men were making no sense, but he would take the opportunity to shoot them, of course. Why wouldn't he? He needed to take any opportunity he could at this rate. Kill as many bloody Vlandians as could possibly be done. Perhaps he was the last one? Even if they were all bugged out, he would kill as many as he bloody well needed to.
Plenty of men were coming. Plenty of weren't. It was a dilemma. But Vladimir had no intention of going down quietly. If they wanted to defeat him, they would have to come to him. Could they break through his bloodthirsty regenerative powers? Or would they be too pathetic to chase him down? Who knew? It was a real throng after him after all. But he was fast, furious, powerful. Could they possibly hope to defeat Vladimir? Even with so many soldiers? More men were streaming in. But they were not catching him. He would kill as many as he bloody well wanted to. They were not going to be fast enough to stop Vladimir. Vladimir had jumped outside. There were too many inside. He had been chased around for way too long and unfortunately... He could not kill the sharpshooters. Vladimir had killed 71 men himself, but it was not enough. Dramor Castle fell and so did he. Taken by the Vlandians. What could he do? Vladimir was fucked. The enemy had a hard on for him. Sionan was under siege. There was nothing that could be done. Make peace with the Azerai. At least that was an option. They would even receive tribute. Absolute nonsense. Viron Castle had been taken. Clearly, Vladimir had no say in anything, considering his current situation. The Western Imperial War needed to end. Support, 100%. Yet, as he was in prison, he could not say anything. He needed to escape. Briefly be capable of... No, he was not going to pay any fucking money. Look at him! Look at him! How is he gonna pay money here? No! That's not possible! Finally! Now there was only the war with the Britannians. Yes, and the Vlandians. It was not looking great. Had they lost Sionan? It was impossible to see at this moment. But they were not going to Drummore Castle. No, they were not. Vladimir was free, finally! Yet, it seemed pretty clear he would not get far before he was caught again. And indeed he was. How was Vladimir going to escape this fate? Would he ever? Could he ever? There was no way in hell Vladimir would allow peace with Vlandians now. Oh no. There was no way. Every single Vlandian needed to die after this. After this humiliation, nonsensical madness, the darkness in Vladimir grew, and that young farm boy was no longer. Now death and destruction were the only way. The black boar would have its vengeance. Right guys, well, this is going to be the last episode for a little bit because I am going on a holiday. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you look forward to seeing the horrific acts that will follow this if Vladimir ever manages to escape. Who knows if he can? I think he will. And we will see destruction of Vlandia. One of the best things to watch always. Looking on as the Butter Lords are chopped into nothing but little fatty blobs. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.